I'm Lizzie Harrison for Card Player TV, and today I'm here with Tony Rivera. How's it going today? It's pretty good. So, Tony recently won the $10,000 buy-in mixed event here at the World Series of Poker. That's eight different games. Do you always consider yourself to be an all-around games player? Um, not always. When I first started playing, I started playing mostly Limit Hold'em about five years back, and uh, as I gradually transitioned from the online games to the games at the Bellagio and Commerce, I realized that in order to play the biggest games and to have the most success, you had to be uh, well-rounded, and so I started picking up the other games a couple years ago. So do you normally play cash games at Bellagio and Commerce? That's how you make your living as a poker player? Right, yeah, I'm a professional, and I play mostly the mixed games, but I play whatever game is going, whatever game is good. What limits are you usually playing? Um, mostly 200, 400, 400, 800. So what prompted you to buy into this tournament? Since Was it because it was a mixed tournament? Well, I was really excited about it. You know, it's my best eight games, and as it turns out, this is the first year they're doing it. It sounded like uh, it would be a good challenge and a lot of fun, so I decided to come out, and uh, it worked out well for me. So how did the event start off for you? Did you just have smooth sailing throughout the tournament? or? Mm, not really. It was a lot of uh, up and down. The new structure that they have is a lot better. The in... eight games? Or excuse no, me, eight no, hands? No, the, um, the, ch the way the chips... Uh, or the way the levels go up, rather, because in the past, a lot of these tournaments, the limit tournaments especially, had been where you would play and the first four hours would mean nothing, and then in the fifth or sixth hour, you'd play one or two pots, which decided your fate. But now you can you know, have a great run in the first level or two. And for okay. me, it was basically struggling to hang on the entire time and uh, trying not to get into any big pots, rather you know, avoiding like the no-limit uh, pot limit rounds more and uh, trying to play to my strengths, which are the limit games. The limit games? Yeah. So the other players in the tournament, I would think, were probably thought that their pot limit and no limit skills were ahead of their limit games. Were you able to take advantage of that also? Right. Um, you know, I play, I am mostly a limit player, and everyone plays the no limit and so feel, all the around, edge. <laughs> feel all around pretty well. But, you know, a lot of these players weren't even sure of the rules of some of the games. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, in, uh, even going late into... Uh, Day one, people still thought that an ace was a good card in Deuce Seven Triple Draw, <laughs> and so definitely to your advantage. Yeah, there. because of this, you know, no one wanted to tell them, and I worked <laughs> out for the best for all of us. And no limit and uh, PLO, you know, those mistakes uh, aren't going to be as costly. No one's going to think the Deuce is the best card. Even though you don't play a lot of poker tournaments, you must be familiar with a lot of pros in this event because they play the big mixed games. Is that true? Right. I played with a lot of the pros that were in this event and a lot of the ones that were at the final table, too, a lot. I'm real familiar with all their games. I'm not sure how much they know about me, but I really felt that I had an advantage in that I'm really good at breaking down the other opponent's play and trying to play against it as best as possible. So where were you in chips going into that final table? I was fifth in chips. I had 200... 77,000 out of uh, 4 million, and I was able to double up the very first hand off uh, Tom Dwan Durr, um, when I uh, flopped a set of queens in uh, PLO. Oh, and he had the kings, right? Right. And he called you down. And so what was Tom Dwan doing at the final table? I heard that he was playing a little bit recklessly. What, he, how would he, you evaluate his play? Uh, he was playing pretty crazy. He wanted to uh, run over the table, and so he was you know, open raising a lot and playing a lot of hands and trying to outplay everyone. And, uh, you know, as it turned out, he lost a couple of races, and so all of a sudden when he lost a lot of his chips, you know, he wasn't able to perform the same strategy as well. So then you knocked him out of the tournament when you had the three deuce against his pocket twos. How did that hand happen? Um, well, you know, he had, uh, someone else had opened, and uh, he had went all in from uh, the button, and so, you know, I decided that it was a good chance to knock one of the most dangerous players in the field left out, and so I called and uh, outflopped him. Absolutely. So what did you think of the play of the other players at the final table? I mean, you have guys like Sammy Farha, Elia Lezra, James Mackey. Are you familiar with all of them? Yeah, I played with uh, most of them. Actually, uh, James Mackey is from my hometown, and he's the, oh, only one, he's the only one that I haven't played with. But uh, for the most part, I was really surprised by uh, the caliber of play. Everyone really brought their A game uh, for this tournament, and uh, people, I didn't really see a lot of mistakes that I would have expected. Everyone played very sharp, very focused, and you could really tell that people uh, were taking a lot of time with their decisions. What types of mistakes did you expect to see, or maybe what mistakes did you see earlier in the tournament? People were uh, playing too loose. Um, some people were misreading their hands. A lot of times uh, people were just playing uh, very weakly with strong hands and not really trying to get tricky. I really felt like in this tournament people were afraid to make bad plays so that they wouldn't make you know, the aggressive plays in limit, whereas in no limit they were over-aggressive. And why do you think that is? Just because they weren't so familiar with the games? Right. I think that that's just a natural tendency when you are new to a game or you're a little uncomfortable. You want to kind of, you know, 
play it a down, little bit passive, yeah. play passively, and then when in the games that you're most comfortable with, you want to uh, you know turn up the aggression. And a lot of the players during the no limit rounds and the pot limit Omaha rounds, where a lot of the players were very strong at it, mm -hmm. you saw that every single pot was being played, and you know it was always contested two ways, three ways. And uh, you know, in the limit rounds, a lot of times it was just a lot of folding. So at the final table, was there like a turning point for you when you really felt that the bracelet was within your grasp or within your reach? There was one really big pot in triple draw where uh, on the last draw, I'm drawing one to uh, number one, the wheel. Okay. And uh, Mike DeMichelle is also drawing one as well to the wheel. And uh, Matt Glantz is Pat. And as it turned out, you know, I spiked the three. I made the wheel. I won a million-dollar pot, which was a quarter of all the chips in play. And, I mean, it very easily could have gone the other way. They're both really great players. And, uh, you know, if I had... Uh, Busted right there. I mean, I would uh, hold no fillings or anything. You know, what can you do? It's poker, and uh, that game is one of the most luck-based of them all. You got heads up with James Mackey, and then it was one hand. What happened? Right. Well, basically, he had uh, he raised from the button. He made it. Uh, this was limit hold'em. This right? was no limit hold'em. No limit hold'em. And uh, we both had about two million behind, and we're playing uh, ten, twenty blinds. He makes it seventy-five on the button. I make it two seventy-five. He moves all in for two million with ace nine. And you have ace king. And I have ace king. You know what? A, what a cooler for him because I wake up with uh, like a real big hand. Heads up. Man. Heads up. Yeah, you know, I had just talked to some of my uh, a couple of my friends had been sweating me before, and a couple of the really high stakes Nolan guys came over and gave me a little pep talk. And uh, he might have saw that and thought that I was making a move. I know. Uh, Being super aggressive. Yeah, the very. Cause, I really wasn't playing no limit uh, pretty crazy or anything. Okay. And I know the very first hand, uh, when it had gotten three-handed and also when it got four-handed, you know, he had uh, open-raised and, uh, you know, another person had re-raised him. So I think that he felt that he had been pushed around a little bit mm -hmm. right when the game switched. And he thought, you know, here, this guy wants to take control of the, the uh, entire heads-up match. And so uh, it's, true, I, it's true I did, <laughs> but, you know, I uh, took control with Ace-King. Do you think if the hands had been reversed and you had ace nine, the hand would have played out the same way? No, I don't think so. I, I you know, I realized that uh, he's a superior no limit player, so I probably would have just let it go and tried to play to my strengths. I, I've heard that he hasn't played much PLO, and I've played a decent amount as okay. well as all the limit games. So I, you're I heard, gonna bide your time. So I was gonna wait beat, yeah. until uh, the limit games where I could, you know, exploit my edge. All right. Well, so what's the next event for you? You're going to be playing a lot of the mixed events. Yeah, I think so. I, I play a lot of poker, and so you know, I just want to get in a lot of hours this World Series. You know, my goal for this World Series was to make a million, so I'm halfway there. You're halfway there, and you have a bracelet. What are you? 22 years old. 22. Yes. Well, congratulations and good luck at the rest of the series. Thanks a lot. Lizzie Harrison with Tony Rivera for Card Player TV.